in the name of God, my name is Mehdi Kurt Navasi, and in this movie we are going to talk about management IT service or welcome to the world of ITIL and this is a chapter one of four. Let's start. with uh, our field and the uh, ITIL is the information technology infrastructure library and uh, in this chapter we we defining IT services and service management understanding what ITIL is about and who it is for getting the gist of the content of ITIL, cleaning up common misunderstanding about ITIL, and seeing how this book fits with the ITIL qualifications. Here, the focus are this book is service management. Users have great expectation of IT services. You expect IT service to be there when you want it. You expect them to be easy to fix when they break. You expect there to be a nice person on the end of the phone to help you out and give you advice. Well, this chapter turns the table and looks at how the companies that provide IT services do what you want them to do. Let's have a defining some basic terms. The service, something that provides value and is available to a customer from a provider. For example, take travel agent. They sell you a holiday package and make sure all the individual bits work together. They book the flights, the transfers, the hotels, and any excursion. What do you do? Pay the money and turn up. Travel agents save you the effort, cost, and risk of doing the individual bits of yourself. The, they provide a service that is of value to you. Let's see what is the IT service. A collection of IT bits and bobs along with the people and documents required to provide an IT system which deliver a service that provide value to a customer. Basically, a bunch of or a group of techie stuff that allows you to do something useful with your computer. For example, when you shop using the internet, you are using an IT service. Your PC, your internet provider, and the company providing the website are all providing IT services for you to use. The next is service management. Service management means me managing a service. In a nutshell, the provider is encouraged to identify and agree what the customer needs and then provide it in an ongoing way. The next is IT service provider, an organization that provides IT system to a user or customer. The organization may be an internet IT department of the company you work for, the people who 
put the computers on your desks and fix them when they go wrong. Equally, it may be a commercial organization that provides IT service in exchange for money. Seeing why IT service users complain. Main purpose of ITIL Improving the management of IT service in order to improve the provision of IT services. A good starting point is to understand the users or customers point of view, understanding what exactly they need. On the other side, let's understanding the IT provider's point of view, providing IT services that please all users all of the time is a challenge because IT is complex. IT systems aren't simple to set up and run and users expect many different type of technology to work together and the next is IT is always changing IT systems change constantly with a new upgrades, software applications, and technologies appearing every week. The next is a user's needs change. People use IT system to help them do businesses. So as the businesses needs change, so do the requirement of the IT systems that support them. IT providers therefore have to deal with constantly changing technology, constantly changing customer needs and high expectations. And let's see why can't customers and IT just talk to each other. Customer service is about finding out what your customers want and giving it to them. So why don't the customer and providers just talk to each other? I often I hear the following kind of exchange. IT says the customers don't know what they want. And the customer says, IT people just talk jargon. They don't understand our business. In many organizations, the IT department is thought of as just providing technology, not providing a service. So IT is just a bunch of technical experts providing IT systems. The IT department's view is that IT is a specialized, so only the experts know what you can have. Therefore, you get what you're given. You may be thinking that this is an old-fashioned view of IT and time have moved on. Well, I assure you that through the training, work I do. I meet many IT staff and users for many organizations who still think this way. You hungry for better service and value from your enterprise IT? Well, imagine having dinner at a restaurant run by grocery store managers. The baker brings out the souffle first when it's done and the dinner rolls last. Produce delivers your baked potato while your steak is still raw. And is the cold macaroni and cheese a dairy problem or a dry goods issue? They provide everything in a meal, but it's not the service you paid for. 
IT departments frequently operate like this. They use the old IT by technologies model. Desktops, servers, networks, like grocers with ingredients. They budget tech, think tech, and they talk tech. They're managing technology ingredients while business needs information services that deliver business value. There's a framework called ITIL that addresses this problem, lowering IT costs and improving service. It's globally accepted as the blueprint for IT to deliver business value. ITIL redefines IT to deliver information services. This video explains the five key service cycles in ITIL by comparing them to service cycles in a restaurant chain. Creating a great restaurant chain is tough. The key business decisions that attract repeat diners, like atmosphere, cuisine, and price, are usually made by the restaurant chain headquarters. They call it restaurant theming. The innermost ITIL cycle, service strategy, is like theming. It provides processes that bring the enterprise and IT together to make the business cases and set the business goals that define what IT will do. When the theme is defined, the menu has to be designed. That's the chef's job. She has to balance ingredients, production, costs, and suppliers, so every location delivers great, consistent meals. ITIL calls this service design, defining information services that meet business case requirements while balancing overall enterprise needs. With a chain menu defined, the kitchens don't just cook up all the recipes. They practice, prep, and document, so dishes can be delivered reliably as diners are ready. ITIL calls this service transition, where IT plans releases of services and changes into the enterprise for maximum business benefit. Waiters naturally focus on delivery. They know what each diner wants, what the kitchen should start next, and they own overall customer satisfaction. In ITIL, this is service operation, where IT resources, like the service desk, take ownership of delivering the information services the business is consuming and of any problems with those services. And just as every great restaurant has a maitre d' coordinating activities and keeping up the standards of the place, ITIL has a continual service improvement cycle to constantly measure and improve the business contribution of IT. ITIL goes beyond chain operation to global standards. ITIL-enabled organizations can move resources across the enterprise or source IT operations from vendors, like borrowing staff from a sister restaurant to handle a party. Language and measures are common. You can't run a great restaurant chain or great IT on a grocery store model, but you can deliver strategic business value with information services using an ITIL blueprint tuned to the needs of your business. CompuCom has been helping IT departments make the move to ITIL for more than 10 10 years. Okay, ITIL, let's see the best practice guidance. ITIL is an acronym, and when it was first established, it stood for the Information Technology Infrastructure Library. But although people still use the acronym ITIL or ITIL. You no longer find the definition in the ITIL books. The benefit of public frameworks such as ITIL is that the guidance has been verified across many industry types and organization types. And so, is easily transferable. The benefits of best practice include the fact that ITL is for any service provider, regardless of size, type of industry. Any organization can improve what it does. So, it doesn't matter whether your organization is public sector or private sector, is manufacturing or service industry or financial, ITIL can still help. So what are the benefits for using best practice guidance? The best 
practice benefits guidance are that first can be adopted and adopted you can adopt the IT processes and practice and adopt them to suit your organization improve efficiency you can improve efficiencies in your organization satisfy customers you can increase your organization's ability to provide services that meet the needs of your customers and the last is is a scale label one size fit all it doesn't matter if you have three people in the IT department or 3000 ITIL is just as applicable IT works best if the concept and process are adopted by the whole IT organization but this doesn't mean IT is aimed only at management the management team must rely on their staff to perform the service management practices and make IT work IT service don't just appear one day fully formed if you want your IT service to meet the needs of your business then careful thought and planning must go into the development of those services not least an understanding of how the service supports the business process the service life cycle consists of five stages an ITIL dedicates a core publication to each the first service strategy service design service transition service operation and continual service improvement at the heart of ITIL is a set of processes it is the processes that make ITIL flexible if I told you that in order to provide good IT services you must have 10 staff employed on your service desk and another 20 in second line support you would put this book down now However, if I describe a way of doing things that provides a number of coordinated activities that you can allocate to your existing staff, you might be more prepared to listen. ITIL, the IT Infrastructure Library, is the most widely recognized framework for IT service management in the world. ITIL has evolved over the last 25 to 30 years as technologies and business practices have evolved. ITIL is not a standard that has to be complied with. Instead, it is a best practice guidance that should be used to create value for the service provider and its customers. In its first iteration, ITIL was a collection of over 40 books detailing best practice in IT service management. These books were rationalized in its second revision and condensed to form eight core publications. The best known of these volumes were Service Support, which reflects the reactive side of service provision, and Service Delivery, which looked at the proactive dimension. In 2007, a major refresh of ITIL was published to reflect significant advances in technology and new challenges facing the providers of IT services. New models and architectures such as outsourcing, shared services, utility computing, cloud computing, virtualization, web services, and mobile commerce have become widespread within IT. 
The ITIL framework is based on a life cycle approach to service provision, broken down over five stages. Each stage of the service life cycle has a core publication providing best practice guidance, which includes key principles, required processes and activities, organization and roles, technology, associated challenges, and critical success factors and risks. In 2011, the core publications were updated as part of the commitment to continual improvement and to improve consistency across the core publications. Debunking some common misconceptions about ITL. Over the years, I've heard many reasons, in some cases excuses, as to why companies haven't adopted ITIL, or why they think ITIL won't work for them. I cover some common myths about ITIL in the following sections. The first, treating ITIL as training only. I have trained many people in ITIL and I'm pleased to see that many attend the foundation courses as part of an awareness project. What concerns me is that the training courses is sometimes viewed as just training to improve someone's skills without realizing that it should be paving the way for the implementation of the ITIL process. For ITIL to provide benefits to your organization, the processes and practices should be adopted and implemented in your IT organization. The next is misinterpreting ITIL. Occasionally, people see what they want to see in ITIL. ITIL isn't a methodology and it isn't perspective, it is guidance. Therefore, by its very nature, it is open to interpretation and therefore also open to misinterpretation. I have heard a story of organizations that have implemented ITIL to the letter, doing exactly what it says. The next reason is thinking ITL is for the service desk and support staff only. ITL is often perceived as being for customer or user facing people only, or only for day to day operations people. I don't know where this idea comes from, however, it's not true. I have known delegates on my training courses who are developers or technical specialists and who state that they don't know why they've been sent because IT is not relevant to them. Remember, everyone in IT has some involvement in providing the IT services to the business. And it is important that all staff are aiming to achieve the same ultimate goal. The next reason, believing that processes introduce unnecessary bureaucracy. No, they don't. Without good processes, your organization is probably wasting time, money, and other resources. If your processes are considered to be bureaucratic, then 
I respectfully suggest that there may be something wrong with them. Maybe they are not well written, or perhaps the reason and need for process has not been properly communicated to the necessary people. The ITIL guidance is just that guidance. You should develop your process in such a way that they work for your organization. The next resume is assuming that ITIL uses a lot of time, stuff, and money. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that IT requires your organization to employ many more staff. This is not true. The best value is to be obtained from using your existing staff in better ways. The process that I describe include activities that can be performed by your existing staff. The processes will ensure that your SU staff are focused on the important things, like providing IT services to your customers. It is true that it will take time, money, and commitment to implement the IT practice, and you should develop a sound business cases before starting. Okay, you as a person who want to enter into this market, you need to taking the ITIL qualifications. You can obtain a number of qualifications to prove that you know something about ITIL. The ITIL Foundation Certificate is the a starting point for anyone waiting to become qualified in ITIL service management. The qualification structure is relatively straightforward. ITIL has four levels. Foundation intermediate, expert, and master. The ITL qualification scheme has something for everyone. Although the shape of the diagram gives the impression of aiming for the top level, this couldn't be further from the truth. The ITL scheme was developed in 2007 to allow candidates to obtain qualifications in their skills area. Each certificate is a qualification in its own right and demonstrates the acquisition of skills and knowledge in this area. However, in addition to collecting these skills, you can, over time, obtain an overall qualification demonstrating knowledge and skills across the service life cycle. The four capability courses provide the practice or practical view of ITIL and cover the skills and knowledge needed to execute the process activities on a daily basis. The four capability courses are SOA or Service Offering and Agreements, PPO or Planning Protection and Optimization, RCV or uh, it means uh, release control and validation and the OSA operational support and analysis. 
okay thank you for watching this movie i hope uh, you get a imagination about the ideal basic concepts thank you